You just found out this is where the, the program uh, Hockey in Harlem started, which is a famous program. Uh, if you're an American, it's really the first program an NHL team put together to uh, get, uh, you know, underprivileged kids an opportunity to play. There's Harlem right behind us. Uh, and obviously, it's a much safer environment here now. And uh, I know when I coached the, the Ducks, our program uh, in Anaheim was based on hockey in Harlem. So this is pretty cool. Yeah, well, with the dads being here, but I mean that was almost irrelevant. This was a, when they said that we couldn't get the ice at uh, at the Garden, we could have gone to Chelsea Pier or come here, and this seemed to be a much more romantic place to come and uh, get back to your roots. Most of our guys, somewhere along the line, played uh, their hockey outdoors, and this was a great opportunity for us. Unfortunately, you know the weather held up. I would like to have been a little colder, maybe a little snow, but. Uh, this is pretty cool. I get to work on my suntan too. Guys will be better here than, than tomorrow. It night could probably. be, yeah, it could be, and that's because of John Tortorella. He slows, he wrecks the ice so it's slower. How special though with the fathers to be a part of today, with their, with their sons to be out here today? No, I think it's great. Uh, you know that it's two way. It's the dads getting to be around their sons and uh, share a special time. But I mean, uh, m my dad only got to see me play in one exhibition game and never got an opportunity to see me coach. So, uh, you know, that's what I reminded our players of how special this is. Sometimes you take things for granted and boom, your, your dad's gone. Not that I'm hoping anything like that will happen, but uh, you always have to cherish these kinds of moments. I, I guess we've gotten to the point where we think Phil's going to score four points every night, and that's just not possible. Uh, but the Bruins do uh, do a really good job against Phil. There's no doubt about that. And, you know, tomorrow won't be any different. The, the Rangers are as hot as anybody in the league, too, so we're going to really have to dig in and work hard. You played one of your better games of the year there. Is there something you did well against that you have to kind of replicate tomorrow night? What, against the Rangers? Yeah. Well... Yeah, it's a month ago. Um, well, we skated really well in that game. We had a game similar at the beginning of last season in, in New York as well. But they're gonna, they're playing much better, so we're going to have to be uh, on our toes tomorrow. Is Jonas's game there? Uh, kind of get him back in. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the plan. We've got back-to-back uh, -back games here, and uh, Jonas will be in there. He, you know, he's had one bad start in in New York, but uh, his other starts, especially playing against Lundqvist, have been pretty good, and that's. A guy he really looks up to, so it's a nice challenge for him. Joining us now on the set is the commissioner of the National Hockey League, Gary Bettman, and uh, this doesn't get old. Being no. here, being around this, the fifth annual, are you surprised at the success that, that you guys have had with this program? Uh, it has been simply phenomenal. Uh, to think that this is a regular season game and it creates this much buzz, this much excitement, this much attention tells you everything you need to know about this event and obviously we got helped in Buffalo the first year with the snow and as a lot of people have said it became an instant classic. Well Gary you had in your job as commissioner for as many years as you've had you had a lot of tough interviews to do but this has got to be your favorite time of the year with this thing rocking with, you know, with uh, all the stuff that's happening and number one where is it going to be next year and, and, <laughs> and number two that you, must, you must just, uh, just love this time yeah. of year. Well, actually, thanks for not asking the tough questions. Uh, <laughs> they no, told me just to lob softballs. It's great. Snowballs. Uh, you know, we, we're, we're already focusing on next year, which for us is a little bit earlier. We haven't made any decisions. And there's absolutely no shortage of interest. Every club either wants to host this or if they're weather challenged, would like to be in it. Gary, was it like that right from the start? Did everybody want it right from the start? Well, there's a little skepticism. And actually, when we did it in Buffalo, obviously there was the game in Ed. Edmonton yep. in 2003, which was a great success. But but the, in the final analysis, uh, until we actually pulled off Buffalo, we didn't know exactly what we were going to get. Gary, one thing that's been so great is you've been able to marry the spirit of the game from the players, but also to our great NHL fans and our corporate partners. How do you weave that all together so it makes such great sense? This is a, an event that connects fans to the game and the game to its roots. The, the fact that players get sheer enjoyment out of being outside you know this Absolutely. where they first learned the game in many cases 
and the unpredictability. The fact that the weather makes this the ultimate reality show for us. And, and in terms of adjusting the times like we did last year in Pittsburgh, and even this year, we've gotten a little bit better at understanding how to handle that as well. Yeah, there are so many challenges when you put an event like this on, especially when you talk about the weather adjusting the game. But when you look at the other events that surround the Winter Classic, the HBO 24-7 special, you get such great insight into what the National Hockey League and the players are all about. That's unprecedented access that fans get to watch. And again, this was an attempt for us to connect our fans and sports fans to a game in a way that that no other sport has done it uh, and 24 7 has made it special we have the skating we had the alumni game on saturday Huge. when this building was filled who would have thought 45,000 people would show up for an alumni game the fact is this event has surprised the cities that have hosted it when we were in pittsburgh people were comparing it to a championship game in football when we were in the football stadium. Uh, and you look around, you see all the people here, the excitement is incredible because you take our athletes who are the world's best both on and off the ice, you take our game, which we're all biased about being the world's best, and then you create a really special environment for what is a regular season game. Now that's the good and the bad because it's a regular season game, but it also counts and it's important for these two teams who are battling for first place. Gary, we also talk so much about expanding the footprint of the National Hockey League, and we've done a great job of that. But on Twitter today, a lot of the fans around the league and around the world, I should say, we even got tweets from somebody in Kuwait. So I don't know if you actually even recognize the impact and the global impact in terms of this game and, and what it's done for our great game and our great fans all across the world. Well, because as I said, it, it's a regular season game, which is great, but it has become an event that, that's probably larger than any sport could imagine for a regular season game. And that's a testament to our fans and, and the very roots and origins of our game. What about the Canadian teams? Are they yes. happy that they're not involved? We've got, <laughs> well, we just mentioned we got the greatest event, yeah. one of the greatest events in well, the NHL when Canada is not involved. So I thought, no tough questions. No, actually, <laughs> He's two for two. I got way tougher ones than no, no, I know, and I'm happy to take them. Uh, we did the Heritage Classic last year. The issue in terms of doing it in Canada uh, relates to the number of yep. teams relatively, and there's a shortage of facilities. Yep. Yep. Uh, we don't have the number of large stadiums that we have available to us in the United States. Obviously, we know it's important to continue to do outdoor games in, uh, in Canada as well. Well, when you look at this matchup, I know when you guys set the schedule, and we were here in September, we had no idea that these two teams were going to be the no. best in the Eastern Conference heading into this, separated by two points. You couldn't have picked two better teams from the standings perspective now in December, January. When you do this event, you have to be a little lucky. Yeah. Uh, and But some people say, well, why do we late, wait so long to try and pick the location and do the matchups? You've got to have some sense of what's going to work at the time. And it appears, based on the weather and everything else around us, that that we've pretty lucky this time. Gary, one of the things I'm asked all the time from p fans and, and people that uh, love our sport is, why don't we do more of them? Well, well the, there's a school of thought that says we should do a ton of them because every city would love to have this experience. I hear from people in Chicago and Boston all the time, why should we have to wait 10 years to get this again? It was such a special event. And then there's the other school of thought that says we've got something very special. Mm -hmm. Why do too many and dilute it? And that's a balancing act. It Gary, is a very Gary, special event. And, and by the way, in terms of our ability to put on this event, in, in, last year we put on two outdoor games in the All-Star yeah. game in the space of six yeah. weeks. Right. And then I think we needed to send a number of our people to a rest home. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, Some kind of home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Gary, why don't you tell the fans a little bit about how much these two respective cities, both Philadelphia and New York, have done to really grow the game throughout the United States? Well, these are both cities that, that love hockey or passionate about hockey. Uh, these are both franchises that, that have you know a storied past, the Rangers being one of the original six and the Flyers, who call themselves one of the original seven. Right. Um, and, and both clubs have done so much work at the grassroots level in terms of, of tons of rinks in the community, uh, ice hockey in Harlem, mm -hmm. inner city program in New York, which is probably the first of its kind, uh, Snyder hockey, where they just took over Ed Snyder using his personal funds and with the Flyers, working with the city of Philadelphia to renovate uh, and run five inner city rinks 
more in those cases, both ice hockey in Harlem and Snyder hockey. It's not just about growing the footprint of hockey. It's about teaching children life's lessons and using our game as that vehicle. Well, we appreciate you stopping by. We know it's a very busy day for you. Where will you be watching the game? Uh, Undisclosed. Uh, Undisclosed. Undisclosed no, no, location. Up, up, upstairs. <laughs> upstairs. I, I, getting a good ticket isn't a problem. No, <laughs> I wouldn't think so. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining you. us. Congratulations on putting on another uh, wonderfully successful Yeah, exactly. Gary, why don't you tell the fans a little bit about how much these two respective cities, both Philadelphia and New York, have done to really grow the game throughout the United States? Well, these are both cities that, that love hockey or passionate about hockey. Uh, these are both franchises that, that have, you know, a storied past, the Rangers being one of the original six and the Flyers, who call themselves one of the original seven. Right. Um, and, and both clubs have done so much work at the grassroots level in terms of, of tons of rinks in the community, uh, ice hockey in Harlem, mm -hmm. inner city program in New York, which is probably the first of its kind, uh, Snyder hockey, where they just took over Ed Snyder using his personal funds and with the Flyers working with the city of Philadelphia to renovate uh, and run five inner city rinks. More in those cases, both ice hockey in Harlem and Snyder hockey. It's not just about growing the footprint of hockey. It's about teaching children life's lessons and using our game as that vehicle. Well, we appreciate you stopping by. We know it's a very busy day for you. Where will you be watching the game? Uh, Undisclosed. Uh, Undisclosed. Undisclosed location. Up, up, upstairs. <laughs> good upstairs. I, I, getting a good ticket isn't a problem. No, <laughs> I wouldn't think so. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining you. us. Congratulations on putting on another uh, wonderfully successful event.